Cellist Christine Lamprea, pianist Nava Perlman live in our WRTI performance studio with the first two movements of Schumann's, I guess you could say, pieces in the tone of the people or the uh, popular style. Yes, in the folk style. The uh, first movement with humor, the second slowly. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. Thank you so much for having us. You, uh, you have a lot, I was going to mention this later, but I think I'll mention it first. You have a lot coming up together. Yes, uh, we just had a recital at Texas Christian University, uh, where I'm currently teaching, and this Sunday we have a recital at Haverford College at 3 p.m. And how did you two get together? Pardon me. Um, <laughs> well, it's a sort of a weird, odd, not what you would think story. Um, so I have a daughter who plays the cello, um, who is currently um, a senior in high school. She's about to turn 18. But when she was younger, um, she got to a point in her cello studies where I sort of felt like I couldn't really help her at home practicing. And I felt like she was still too young to really get anything effective done by herself. And I sort of was pondering getting like a practice buddy for her. And um, it ended up being Christine. <laughs> yeah, this was about nine years ago. Yeah. Um, so we've been playing together for quite a while. Well, we at didn't. first we didn't. At first it was really like I would just see her in the apartment and she would go off with my daughter and really like just sit in there with her and I would sort of just said hi and bye. Um, but then over time um, we sort of got to know each other and yeah, it ended up being a really fun thing to play together. So. Yeah. And I, I was going to ask you as well, sometimes I'm interested in finding out how you choose a certain instrument. What was it about the cello? Well, it's a very inspiring story. Um, I was in the fifth grade, and there was an after-school class, a uh, string, introductory strings class, and I wanted to play the bass, but it didn't fit in my parents' car, so I just chose the next bass one. <laughs> <laughs> And Nava, both of your parents are violinists, yeah. and you play the piano. Were yes. there no more violins left <laughs> You in know, the house? it's funny. I think that I didn't really register wanting to play another instrument ever. I, I had, there was a piano in my home growing up, and when I was six, five, six years old, I would go and plunk it out, and I think I just thought, why, why would I not do that? Because it's sitting right here in front of me, and you can get a sound right away. You know, it's like, I think with some instruments, you know, you have to actually think it through a little bit more because it requires some coordination. I'm not that the piano doesn't, but you can you can sort of know nothing and just go like that, and something comes out. I think that probably kind of drew me in at first. But um, but I always loved listening to piano music, um, radio and LPs and all of that. So. And Christine, you uh, performed for a Supreme Court justice. Yes. With some of your own arrangements. Yes. Um, so that was for the Sphinx Medal of Excellence ceremony, which I received last year. Um, and Justice Sotomayor was kind enough to host the event at the Supreme Court. Um, and I had been arranging uh, some South American tunes for cello and piano. So we got to play some of them for her, and she was really excited <laughs> and happy. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to bring them in and kind of... Uh, rock the great hall of the Supreme Court. It was, it was kind of funny. <laughs> and what's the next piece you're going to play for us? The next piece is the uh, Debussy Cello Sonata. Uh, the program we're playing at Haverford uh, kind of has a programmatic bent to it. So the Schumann kind of evokes these, uh, you know, these scenes, um, these folk scenes. And uh, this Debussy Sonata is directly about uh, Pierrot, the, the story of Pierrot, and so um, it's been a great pleasure working on it with Nava, and we're excited to play it this weekend and a little now. And here are Christine and Nava.
First and third movements of Debussy Sonata for Cello and Piano in D minor, performed live in our WRTI performance studio by cellist Christine Lamprea and pianist Nava Perlman. Um, this is part of the program that's coming up Sunday. Yes, it is. Yep. You have uh, quite a varied uh, list of composers in this program. Yeah, it's a it's a big program. Uh, so we're starting with the Beethoven uh, set of variations based on a theme from an aria from the Magic Flute. Um, and then I rather indulgently put in the Schubert Arpeggione Sonata. It's not really programmatic, but to me the, the lyricism of it almost could be. It's almost a little bit narrative. Uh, then we're ending the first half with a sonata by Paul Tortelier, the French cellist. Um, the sonata is about uh, the mythical, well, it, the horse did exist, Bucephalus, uh, who was the charger horse of Alexander the Great. And there are tons of stories written about him. Um, and so Tortelier wrote kind of a comic uh, sonata about him. And then the second half is the Schumann uh and then the WC Sonata. Sounds like a great program. We were talking a few minutes ago about your daughter and about uh, 
how you both started playing at a very early age. Uh, sometimes there are children listening. Do you have any advice for them about a career in music? Um, just keep loving music, I think. And then the more, I think the people that we love to work with just exhibit like an unending love for music and it's just more fun to play with those people. Uh, so just keep loving music and I think the career will kind of find, you know, carve its way into your life somehow, yeah, and practice. <laughs> well, I would add about the practicing, especially for younger kids, um, that, you know, to remember that, and I wish someone had sort of said this to me earlier on, but practicing is something that very few children like to do. Um, and I think that it helps, even if a parent doesn't know anything about music, it helps to just sit in the room with your child while they practice so that they're not alone. It's a very solitary experience practicing. One of the reasons I think kids sometimes just don't like it is because they're by themselves, and most people don't like to be along, alone for that long. So practice, you don't have to practice with your kid, but, but sit with your kids, sit and read a book so they're not by themselves. And the other thing I would, I would tell kids, especially teenagers, is, you know, there isn't, any job, I don't think, that exists in the world that doesn't have something about it that's not appealing. You know, there's always something that's not appealing. Like, I remember once talking to um, to a doctor, and I said, oh, is it so exciting being a surgeon or whatever? And she said, of course it is, but then there's all that paperwork or something. You know, there's always, like, some aspect of the job that's, like, not why you did it. And I think for musicians, so, like, we didn't sign up for this so that we could sit alone in a room and practice. We signed up for this so that we could play. And I think the the thing to remember is that practicing is the only way to play. So if you want to play and you want to have fun with your friends practice, playing, practicing is part of that. And that may be the, the not fun part, but in the end you get this huge reward. So just, just keep that in the back of your mind. And uh, our reward comes Sunday with another performance by you two. Thank you very much for Thank being you. our guest today.